Hello, are you there? เป็นไงบ้างเรดาเรียนหนังสือไหมวันนี้มันไม่ได้เรียนปิดเทอมไม่ไมปิดอ๋อช่วงนี้ปิดเทอมใช่ไหมแต่ว่าช่วงนี้มันมีมีวันหยุดเยอะใช่ปะพรุ่งอ่าวันสเตตเข้าพันทรงเข้าพันศาลอะไรอย่างนั้นแหละแล้วแล้วก็จะเปิดเทอมแล้วครับเปิดเทอมวันที่เท่าไหร่ครับประมาณยี่สิบแปดนะครับยี่สิบแปดเดือนนี้นะอืมเดือนนี้ครับโอเคถ้าอย่างนั้นไม่น่ามีปัญหาก็ลองไล่ดูนะครับ listening speaking listening speaking นั่นแหละนะเป็นไงบ้างเท่าที่เรียนมา happy ไหมฮะโอเคครับอืมนะประมาณนั้น speaking speaking ไม่น่ามีปัญหาเพราะเรดาร์ได้อยู่แล้วเนาะอืมมั่นใจไหมถ้าถ้าได้คำถามง่ายๆก็โอเคครับแต่ว่ามั่นใจอืมแต่ก็ต้องลองดูนะครับ listening part ไหนที่เราเป็นห่วงมากที่สุดครับ listening part ไหนที่เราเป็นห่วงมากที่สุดครับมันมันมีพาร์ทไหนบ้างครับมันจะมีพาร์ทหนึ่งพาร์ทสองใช่ปะจะเป็น daily conversation ยี่สิบข้อแรกนะครับพาร์ทสองมันจะยากขึ้นมาหน่อยแล้วก็พาร์ทสามพาร์ทสี่ที่เป็น academic context ถูกไหมอืมใช่ก็ลองดูอ่ะเดี๋ยววันนี้เนี่ยเราจะมานั่งทำ listening นะครับสองคิวค่ะจะให้อยู่ random นะฮะอยู่อยากฟังเทปไหนไม่ต้องรอใครละอ่ะลองไล่ดูนะครับก็เรียนเท่าที่มีแหละนะครับ schedule timing คือตรามเวลาจะมีเล่มสิบครับผมเล่มสิบเอ็ดเล่มสิบสองเล่มสิบสามเล่มสิบสี่เล่มสิบห้าและเล่มสิบหกอ่านะฮะ random ไปเลยครับเล่มเล่มล่าสุดเลยครับก็คือเล่มสิบหกเล่มสิบหกมีสี่ test เอา test ไหนเอา test สี่ครับสี่นี่เพราะฉะนั้นเราจะฟังสองรอบนะก็คืออยู่ต้องทำข้อสอบสองสองครั้งนะครับเพื่อเวทว่าครั้งที่หนึ่งครั้งที่สองเป็นยังไงบ้างพร้อมนะพร้อมยังโอเคครับอ่าพร้อมก็ต้องพร้อม This is the IELTS listening test This is the IELTS listening test You will hear a number of different recordings and you will have to answer questions on what you hear There will be time for you to read the instructions and questions, and you will have a chance to check your work. All the recordings will be played once only. The test is in four parts. At the end of the test, you will be given 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet. Now turn to part one. Part one. You will hear a man phoning the owner of a holiday cottage. First, you have some time to look at questions one to six. Now listen carefully and answer questions one to six. Hello. Oh, hello. I was hoping to speak to Jack Fitzgerald about renting a cottage. I'm his wife Shirley, and we own the cottages together. So I'm sure I can help you. Great. My name's Tom. Some friends of ours rented Granary Cottage from you last year, and they thought it was great. So my wife and I are hoping to come in May for a week. What date did you have in mind? The week beginning the 14th, if possible. 
I'll just check. I'm sorry, Tom, it's already booked that week. It's free the week beginning the 28th, though, for seven nights. In fact, that's the only time you could have it in May. Oh, well, we could manage that, I think. We'd just need to change a couple of things. How much would it cost? That's the beginning of high season, so it'd be £550 for the week. Ah, that's a bit more than we wanted to pay, I'm afraid. We've budgeted up to £500 for accommodation. Well, we've just finished converting another building into a cottage, which we're calling Cherville Cottage. Sorry, what was that again? Cherville. C H E R V for Victor I L. Oh, that's a herb, isn't it? That's right. It grows fairly wild around here. You could have that for the week you want for £480. OK. So could you tell me something about it, please? Of course. The building was built as a garage. It's a little smaller than Granary Cottage. So that must sleep two people as well? That's right. There's a double bedroom. Does it have a garden? Yes, you get to it from the living room through French doors. And we provide two deck chairs. We hope to build a patio in the near future, but I wouldn't like to guarantee it'll be finished by May. OK. The front door opens onto the old farmyard, and parking isn't a problem. There's plenty of room at the front for that. There are some trees and potted plants there. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 7 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 7 to 10. What about facilities in the cottage? It has standard things like a cooker and fridge, I presume. In the kitchen area, there's a fridge freezer and we've just put in an electric cooker. Is there a washing machine? Yes. There's also a TV in the living room, which plays DVDs too. The bathroom is too small for a bath, so there's a shower instead. I think a lot of people prefer that nowadays anyway. It's more environmentally friendly, isn't it? Unless you spend half the day in it. <laughs> exactly. What about heating? It sometimes gets quite cool at that time of year. There's central heating, and if you want to light a fire, there's a stove. We can provide all the wood you need for it. It smells so much nicer than coal, and it makes the room very cosy. We've got one in our own house. That sounds very pleasant. Perhaps we should come in the winter to make the most of it. Yes. We find we don't want to go out when we've got the fire burning. There are some attractive views from the cottage, which I haven't mentioned. There's a famous stone bridge. It's one of the oldest in the region, and you can see it from the living room. It isn't far away. The bedroom window looks in the opposite direction and has a lovely view of the hills and the monument at the top. Well, that all sounds perfect. I'd like to book it, please. Would you want a deposit? Yes. We ask for 30% to secure your booking. So that'll be uh, £144. And when would you like the rest of the money? You're coming in May. So, the last day of March, please. Fine. Excellent. Could I just take your details so that I can... That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers to part one.
Part 2. You will hear a town councillor reporting on the local transport network and a recreation facility. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 14. Now listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 14. Right, next on the agenda we have traffic and highways. Councillor Thornton. Thank you. Well, we now have the results of the survey carried out last month about traffic and road transport in the town. People were generally satisfied with the state of the roads. There were one or two complaints about potholes, which will be addressed but a significant number of people complained about the increasing number of heavy vehicles using our local roads to avoid traffic elsewhere. We'd expected more complaints by commuters about the reduction in the train service, but it doesn't seem to have affected people too much. The cycle path that runs alongside the river is very well used by both cyclists and pedestrians since the surface was improved last year but overtaking can be a problem, so we're going to add a bit on the side to make it wider. At some stage, we'd like to extend the path so that it goes all the way through the town, but that won't be happening in the immediate future. The plans to have a pedestrian crossing next to the post office have unfortunately had to be put on hold for the time being. We'd budgeted for this to be done this financial year, but then there were rumours that the post office was going to move, which would have meant there wasn't really a need for a crossing. Now they've confirmed that they're staying where they are, but the highways department have told us that it would be dangerous to have a pedestrian crossing where we'd originally planned it, as there's a bend in the road there, so that'll need some more thought. On Station Road, near the station and level crossing, drivers can face quite long waits if the level crossing's closed and we've now got signs up requesting them not to leave their engines running at that time. This means pedestrians waiting on the pavement to cross the railway line don't have to breathe in car fumes. We've had some problems with cyclists leaving their bikes chained to the railings outside the ticket office, but the station has agreed to provide bike racks there. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 15 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 15 to 20. So next on the agenda is proposals for improvements to the recreation ground. Councillor Thornton again. Well, since we managed to extend the recreation ground, we've spent some time talking to local people about how it could be made a more attractive and useful space. If you have a look at the map up on the screen, you can see the river up in the north and the community hall near the entrance from the road. At present, cars can park between the community hall and that line of trees to the east, but this is quite dangerous for pedestrians, so we're suggesting a new car park on the opposite side of the community hall right next to it. We also have a new location for the cricket pitch. As we've now purchased additional space to the east of the recreation ground, beyond the trees, we plan to move it away from its current location, which is rather near the road, into this new area beyond the line of trees. This means there's less danger of stray balls hitting cars or pedestrians. We've got plans for a children's playground, 
which will be accessible by a footpath from the community hall and will be alongside the river. We'd originally thought of having it close to the road, but we think this will be a more attractive location. The skateboard ramp is very popular with both younger and older children. We had considered moving this up towards the river, but in the end, we decided to have it in the southeast corner near the road. The pavilion is very well used at present by both football players and cricketers. It will stay where it is now, to the left of the line of trees and near to the river, handy for both the football and cricket pitches. And finally, we'll be getting a new notice board for local information, and that will be directly on people's right as they go from the road into the recreation ground. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers to part two. Part 3. You will hear two urban planning students discussing bike sharing schemes in different cities. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 24. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 24. Now that we've done all the research into bike sharing schemes in cities around the world, we need to think about how we're going to organise our report. Right. I think we should start by talking about the benefits. I mean, it's great that so many cities have introduced these schemes where anyone can pick up a bike from dozens of different locations and hire it for a few hours. It makes riding a bike very convenient for people. Yes, but the costs can add up and that puts people on low incomes off in some places. Mm, I suppose so. But if it means more people in general are cycling rather than driving, then because they're increasing the amount of physical activity they do, it's good for their health. OK, but isn't that of less importance? I mean, doesn't the impact of reduced emissions on air pollution have a more significant effect on people's health? Certainly in some cities, bike sharing has made a big contribution to that and also help to cut the number of cars on the road significantly. Which is the main point. Exactly. But I'd say it's had less of an impact on noise pollution because there are still loads of buses and lorries around. Right. Shall we quickly discuss the recommendations we're going to make? In order to ensure bike sharing schemes are successful? Yes. OK. Well, while I think it's nice to have really state-of-the-art bikes with things like GPS, I wouldn't say they're absolutely necessary. But some technical things are really important, like a fully functional app, so people can make payments and book bikes easily. Places which haven't invested in that have really struggled. Good point. Some people say there shouldn't be competing companies offering separate bike-sharing schemes, but in some really big cities, competition's beneficial. And anyway... One company might not be able to manage the whole thing. Right. Deciding how much to invest is a big question. The cities which have opened loads of new bike lanes at the same time as introducing bike-sharing schemes have generally been more successful. But there are examples of successful schemes where this hasn't happened. What does matter, though, is having a big publicity campaign. Definitely. If people don't know how to use the scheme, or don't understand its benefits, they won't use it. People need a lot of persuasion to stop using their cars. Before you hear the rest of the discussion, you have some time to look at questions 25 to 30.
Now listen and answer questions 25 to 30. Shall we look at some examples now and say what we think is good or bad about them? I suppose we should start with Amsterdam, as this was one of the first cities to have a bike-sharing scheme. Yes, there was already a strong culture of cycling here. In a way, it's strange that there was such a demand for bike-sharing, because you'd have thought most people would have used their own bikes. And yet it's one of the best-used schemes. Dublin's an interesting example of a success story. It must be because the public transport system's quite limited. Not really. There's no underground, but there are trams and a good bus network. I'd say price has a lot to do with it. It's one of the cheapest schemes in Europe to join. But the buses are really slow. Anyway, the weather certainly can't be a factor. No, definitely not. The London scheme's been quite successful. Yes, it's been a really good thing for the city. The bikes are popular and the whole system is well maintained, but it isn't expanding quickly enough. Basically, not enough's been spent on increasing the number of cycle lanes. Hopefully that'll change. Yes. Now, what about outside Europe? Well, bike-sharing schemes have taken off in places like Buenos Aires. Hmm. They built a huge network of cycle lanes to support the introduction of the scheme there, didn't they? It attracted huge numbers of cyclists, where previously there were hardly any. An example of good planning. Absolutely. New York is a good example of how not to introduce a scheme. When they launched it, it was more than ten times the price of most other schemes. More than it costs to take a taxi. Crazy. I think the organisers lacked vision and ambition there. I think so too. Sydney would be a good example to use. I would have expected it to have grown pretty quickly here. Yes. I can't quite work out why it hasn't been an instant success like some of the others. It's a shame, really. I know. OK, so now we've thought about all the... That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers to part three. Part 4. You will hear part of an environmental science lecture about a large bird called the dodo, which is now extinct. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. One of the most famous cases of extinction is that of a bird known as the dodo. In fact, there's even a saying in English, as dead as the dodo, used to refer to something which no longer exists. But for many centuries, the dodo was alive and well, although it could only be found in one place, the island of Mauritius in the Indian Ocean. It was a very large bird, about one metre tall, and over the centuries it had lost the ability to fly, but it survived happily under the trees that covered the island. Then, in the year 1507, the first Portuguese ships stopped at the island, the sailors were carrying spices back to Europe 
and found the island a convenient stopping place where they could stock up with food and water for the rest of the voyage. But they didn't settle on Mauritius. However, in 1638, the Dutch arrived and set up a colony there. These first human inhabitants of the island found the dodo birds a convenient source of meat, although not everyone liked the taste. It's hard to get an accurate description of what the dodo actually looked like. We do have some written records from sailors and a few pictures, but we don't know how reliable these are. The best known picture is a Dutch painting in which the bird appears to be extremely fat, but this may not be accurate. An Indian painting done at the same time shows a much thinner bird. Although attempts were made to preserve the bodies of some of the birds, no complete specimen survives. In the early 17th century, Four dried parts of a bird were known to exist. Of these, three have disappeared. So only one example of soft tissue from the dodo survives, a dodo head. Bones have also been found, but there's only one complete skeleton in existence. This single dodo skeleton has recently been the subject of scientific research, which suggests that many of the earlier beliefs about dodos may have been incorrect. For example, early accounts of the birds mention how slow and clumsy it was. But scientists now believe the bird's strong knee joints would have made it capable of movement, which was not slow but actually quite fast. In fact, one 17th century sailor wrote that he found the birds hard to catch. It's true that the dodo's small wings wouldn't have allowed it to leave the ground, but the scientists suggest that these were probably employed for balance while going over uneven ground. Another group of scientists carried out analysis of the dodo's skull. They found that the reports of the lack of intelligence of the dodo were not borne out by their research, which suggested the bird's brain was not small, but average in size. In fact, in relation to its body size, it was similar to that of the pigeon, which is known to be a highly intelligent bird. The researchers also found that the structure of the bird's skull suggested that one sense which was particularly well-developed was that of smell. So the dodo may also have been particularly good at locating ripe fruit and other food in the island's thick vegetation. So it looks as if the dodo was better able to survive and defend itself than was originally believed. Yet, less than 200 years after Europeans first arrived on the island, they had become extinct. So what was the reason for this? For a long time, it was believed that the dodos were hunted to extinction. But scientists now believe the situation was more complicated than this. Another factor may have been the new species brought to the island by the sailors. These included dogs, which would have been a threat to the dodos, and also monkeys, which ate the fruit that was the main part of the dodos' diet. These were brought to the island deliberately but the ships also brought another type of creature, rats, which came to land from the ships and rapidly overran the island. These upset the ecology of the island, not just the dodos, but other species too. However, they were a particular danger to the dodos because they consumed their eggs. 
And since each dodo only laid one at a time, this probably had a devastating effect on populations. However, we now think that probably the main cause of the bird's extinction was not the introduction of non-native species, but the introduction of agriculture. This meant that the forest that had once covered all the island and that had provided a perfect home for the dodo was cut down so that crops such as sugar could be grown. So, although the dodo had survived for thousands of years, suddenly it was gone. That is the end of part four. You now have one minute to check your answers to part four. เดี๋ยวๆกันไปนะครับเป็นไงบ้างทันมั้ยนะฮะเล่มที่สิบหกนะฮะแคมบริดจ์เล่มที่สิบหกแล้วก็เทสที่สี่นี่ไม่ทัน
species species เติมเอสก็ได้ไม่เติมก็ได้ colony s e t t l e m ดีมากใช้คำว่า colony นะครับเพราะว่าไอได้ยินคำว่า colony นะครับ colony นั่นแหละนะครับเพราะว่าถ้าเกิดว่าเราบอก settlement เนี่ยมันเป็นการเทียบนี่ใช่ไหมอืม fat height movement balances balancing and brain smell smelling ได้ไหมเขาฟิก one word ถูกไหมไอตอบ smelling ไปอ่ะได้ไหมเนี่ยเขาใช้ก่อนแบบนี้ smelling เป็นนาว smell ก็เป็นนาวเหมือนกันใช่ปะในโจทย์มันครับมันฟิกฟิกพาราสปีดปะคือต้องเช็คว่ามันฟิกพาราสปีดหรือเปล่าถ้าเกิดมันเป็นตัวนั้นต้องการนาวเราก็ต้องเปลี่ยนเป็นพาราสปีดเป็นนาวนะครับอืมรัดฟอร์เรสต์เพจหลุดข้อสามเก้าครับฟังฟังไว้ทันข้อสามเก้าร็ดร็ดเกตมันบอกว่าร็ดเกตนิดหนึ่งแต่ต้องสเปลดีดีนะครับอืมอ่ะลองไปฟังใหม่แล้วกันนะครับซูซูครับเป็นไงบ้างได้คะแนนดีไหมเกินสามสิบไหมฮะเลขที่ออกคือเลขสามต้องนำหน้าเท่านั้นนะครับอ่าอ่างั้นไปฟังใหม่ดีกว่านะพร้อมนะครับขอคิวใหม่นะฮะ one two three go you will hear a number of different recordings and you will have to answer questions on what you hear there will be time for you to read the instructions and questions and you will have a chance to check your work all the recordings will be played once only The test is in four parts. At the end of the test, you will be given 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet. Now turn to part one. Part one. You will hear a man phoning the owner of a holiday cottage. First, you have some time to look at questions one to six. Now listen carefully and answer questions one to six. Hello. Oh, hello. I was hoping to speak to Jack Fitzgerald about renting a cottage. I'm his wife Shirley, and we own the cottages together. So I'm sure I can help you. Great. My name's Tom. Some friends of ours rented Granary Cottage from you last year, and they thought it was great. So my wife and I are hoping to come in May for a week. What date did you have in mind? The week beginning the 14th, if possible. I'll just check. I'm sorry, Tom. It's already booked that week. It's free the week beginning the 28th, though, for seven nights. In fact, that's the only time you could have it in May. Oh, well, we could manage that, I think. We'd just need to change a couple of things. How much would it cost? That's the beginning of high season, so it'd be five hundred and fifty pounds for the week. Ah, that's a bit more than we wanted to pay. I'm afraid. We've budgeted up to five hundred pounds for accommodation. Well, we've just finished converting another building into a cottage, which we're calling Cherville Cottage. Sorry, what was that again? Cherville, C H E R V for Victor, I L. Oh, that's a herb, isn't it? That's right. It grows fairly wild around here. You could have that for the week you want for four hundred and eighty pounds. Okay. So, could you tell me something about it, please? Of course. The building was built as a garage. It's a little smaller than Granary Cottage, so that must sleep two people as well. That's right. There's a double bedroom. Does it have a garden? Yes, you get to it from the living room through French doors, and we provide two deck chairs. We hope to build a patio in the near future, 
but I wouldn't like to guarantee it'll be finished by May. OK. The front door opens onto the old farmyard, and parking isn't a problem. There's plenty of room at the front for that. There are some trees and potted plants there. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 7 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 7 to 10. What about facilities in the cottage? It has standard things like a cooker and fridge, I presume. In the kitchen area, there's a fridge freezer, and we've just put in an electric cooker. Is there a washing machine? Yes. There's also a TV in the living room, which plays DVDs too. The bathroom is too small for a bath, so there's a shower instead. I think a lot of people prefer that nowadays anyway. It's more environmentally friendly, isn't it? Unless you spend half the day in it. <laughs> exactly. What about heating? It sometimes gets quite cool at that time of year. There's central heating, and if you want to light a fire, there's a stove. We can provide all the wood you need for it. It smells so much nicer than coal, and it makes the room very cosy. We've got one in our own house. That sounds very pleasant. Perhaps we should come in the winter to make the most of it. Yes. We find we don't want to go out when we've got the fire burning. There are some attractive views from the cottage, which I haven't mentioned. There's a famous stone bridge. It's one of the oldest in the region, and you can see it from the living room. It isn't far away. The bedroom window looks in the opposite direction and has a lovely view of the hills and the monument at the top. Well, that all sounds perfect. I'd like to book it, please. Would you want a deposit? Yes. We ask for 30% to secure your booking. So that'll be uh, £144. And when would you like the rest of the money? You're coming in May. So, the last day of March, please. Fine. Excellent. Could I just take your details so that I can... That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers to part one. Part 2. You will hear a town councillor reporting on the local transport network and a recreation facility. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 14. Now listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 14. Right, next on the agenda we have traffic and highways. Councillor Thornton. Thank you. Well, we now have the results of the survey carried out last month about traffic and road transport in the town. People were generally satisfied with the state of the roads. There were one or two complaints about potholes, which will be addressed, but a significant number of people complained about the increasing number of heavy vehicles using our local roads to avoid traffic elsewhere. We'd expected more complaints by commuters about the reduction in the train service, but it doesn't seem to have affected people too much. 
The cycle path that runs alongside the river is very well used by both cyclists and pedestrians since the surface was improved last year. But overtaking can be a problem, so we're going to add a bit on the side to make it wider. At some stage, we'd like to extend the path so that it goes all the way through the town, but that won't be happening in the immediate future. The plans to have a pedestrian crossing next to the post office have unfortunately had to be put on hold for the time being. We'd budgeted for this to be done this financial year, but then there were rumours that the post office was going to move, which would have meant there wasn't really a need for a crossing. Now they've confirmed that they're staying where they are, but the highways department have told us that it would be dangerous to have a pedestrian crossing where we'd originally planned it, as there's a bend in the road there, so that'll need some more thought. On Station Road, near the station and level crossing, drivers can face quite long waits if the level crossing's closed, and we've now got signs up requesting them not to leave their engines running at that time. This means pedestrians waiting on the pavement to cross the railway line don't have to breathe in car fumes. We've had some problems with cyclists leaving their bikes chained to the railings outside the ticket office, but the station has agreed to provide bike racks there. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 15 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 15 to 20. So next on the agenda is proposals for improvements to the recreation ground. Councillor Thornton again. Well, since we managed to extend the recreation ground, we've spent some time talking to local people about how it could be made a more attractive and useful space. If you have a look at the map up on the screen, you can see the river up in the north and the community hall near the entrance from the road. At present, cars can park between the community hall and that line of trees to the east, but this is quite dangerous for pedestrians, so we're suggesting a new car park on the opposite side of the community hall, right next to it. We also have a new location for the cricket pitch. As we've now purchased additional space to the east of the recreation ground, beyond the trees, we plan to move it away from its current location, which is rather near the road, into this new area beyond the line of trees. This means there's less danger of stray balls hitting cars or pedestrians. We've got plans for a children's playground, which will be accessible by a footpath from the community hall and will be alongside the river. We'd originally thought of having it close to the road, but we think this will be a more attractive location. The skateboard ramp is very popular with both younger and older children. We had considered moving this up towards the river, but in the end, we decided to have it in the southeast corner near the road. The pavilion is very well used at present by both football players and cricketers. It will stay where it is now, to the left of the line of trees and near to the river, handy for both the football and cricket pitches. And finally, we'll be getting a new notice board for local information, and that will be directly on people's right as they go from the road into the recreation ground. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers to part two. Part 3. You will hear two urban planning students 
discussing bike sharing schemes in different cities. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 24. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 24. Now that we've done all the research into bike sharing schemes in cities around the world, we need to think about how we're going to organise our report. Right. I think we should start by talking about the benefits. I mean, it's great that so many cities have introduced these schemes where anyone can pick up a bike from dozens of different locations and hire it for a few hours. It makes riding a bike very convenient for people. Yes, but the costs can add up and that puts people on low incomes off in some places. Mm, I suppose so. But if it means more people in general are cycling rather than driving, then because they're increasing the amount of physical activity they do, it's good for their health. OK, but isn't that of less importance? I mean, doesn't the impact of reduced emissions on air pollution have a more significant effect on people's health? Certainly in some cities, bike sharing has made a big contribution to that and also helped to cut the number of cars on the road significantly. Which is the main point. Exactly. But I'd say it's had less of an impact on noise pollution because there are still loads of buses and lorries around. Right. Shall we quickly discuss the recommendations we're going to make? In order to ensure bike sharing schemes are successful? Yes. OK. Well... While I think it's nice to have really state-of-the-art bikes with things like GPS, I wouldn't say they're absolutely necessary. But some technical things are really important, like a fully functional app so people can make payments and book bikes easily. Places which haven't invested in that have really struggled. Good point. Some people say there shouldn't be competing companies offering separate bike-sharing schemes, but in some really big cities... Competition's beneficial. And anyway, one company might not be able to manage the whole thing. Right. Deciding how much to invest is a big question. Cities which have opened loads of new bike lanes at the same time as introducing bike-sharing schemes have generally been more successful. But there are examples of successful schemes where this hasn't happened. What does matter, though, is having a big publicity campaign. Definitely. If people don't know how to use the scheme or don't understand its benefits, they won't use it. People need a lot of persuasion to stop using their cars. Before you hear the rest of the discussion, you have some time to look at questions 25 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 25 to 30. Shall we look at some examples now and say what we think is good or bad about them? I suppose we should start with Amsterdam, as this was one of the first cities to have a bike-sharing scheme. Yes, there was already a strong culture of cycling here. In a way, it's strange that there was such a demand for bike-sharing because you'd have thought most people would have used their own bikes. And yet it's one of the best-used schemes. Dublin's an interesting example of a success story. It must be because the public transport system's quite limited. Not really. There's no underground, but there are trams and a good bus network. I'd say price has a lot to do with it. It's one of the cheapest schemes in Europe to join. But the buses are really slow. Anyway, the weather certainly can't be a factor. No, definitely not. The London scheme's been quite successful. Yes, it's been a really good thing for the city. The bikes are popular and the whole system is well-maintained, but it isn't expanding quickly enough. 
Basically, not enough's been spent on increasing the number of cycle lanes. Hopefully that'll change. Yes. Now, what about outside Europe? Well, bike-sharing schemes have taken off in places like Buenos Aires. Hmm. They built a huge network of cycle lanes to support the introduction of the scheme there, didn't they? It attracted huge numbers of cyclists, where previously there were hardly any. An example of good planning. Absolutely. New York is a good example of how not to introduce a scheme. When they launched it, it was more than ten times the price of most other schemes. More than it costs to take a taxi. Crazy. I think the organisers lacked vision and ambition there. I think so too. Sydney would be a good example to use. I would have expected it to have grown pretty quickly here. Yes. I can't quite work out why it hasn't been an instant success like some of the others. It's a shame, really. I know. OK, so now we've thought about all the... That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers to part three. Part 4. You will hear part of an environmental science lecture about a large bird called the dodo, which is now extinct. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. One of the most famous cases of extinction is that of a bird known as the dodo. In fact, there's even a saying in English, as dead as the dodo, used to refer to something which no longer exists. But for many centuries, the dodo was alive and well, although it could only be found in one place, the island of Mauritius in the Indian Ocean. It was a very large bird, about one metre tall, and over the centuries it had lost the ability to fly, but it survived happily under the trees that covered the island. Then, in the year 1507, the first Portuguese ships stopped at the island. The sailors were carrying spices back to Europe and found the island a convenient stopping place where they could stock up with food and water for the rest of the voyage. But they didn't settle on Mauritius. However, in 1638, the Dutch arrived and set up a colony there. These first human inhabitants of the island found the dodo birds a convenient source of meat, although not everyone liked the taste. It's hard to get an accurate description of what the dodo actually looked like. We do have some written records from sailors and a few pictures, but we don't know how reliable these are. The best known picture is a Dutch painting in which the bird appears to be extremely fat but this may not be accurate. An Indian painting done at the same time shows a much thinner bird. Although attempts were made to preserve the bodies of some of the birds, no complete specimen survives. 
In the early 17th century, four dried parts of a bird were known to exist. Of these, three have disappeared. So only one example of soft tissue from the dodo survives, a dodo head. Bones have also been found, but there's only one complete skeleton in existence. This single dodo skeleton has recently been the subject of scientific research, which suggests that many of the earlier beliefs about dodos may have been incorrect. For example, early accounts of the birds mention how slow and clumsy it was. But scientists now believe the bird's strong knee joints would have made it capable of movement, which was not slow, but actually quite fast. In fact, one 17th century sailor wrote that he found the birds hard to catch. It's true that the dodo's small wings wouldn't have allowed it to leave the ground, but the scientists suggest that these were probably employed for balance while going over uneven ground. Another group of scientists carried out analysis of the dodo's skull. They found that the reports of the lack of intelligence of the dodo were not borne out by their research, which suggested the bird's brain was not small, but average in size. In fact, in relation to its body size, it was similar to that of the pigeon, which is known to be a highly intelligent bird. The researchers also found that the structure of the bird's skull suggested that one sense which was particularly well-developed was that of smell. So the dodo may also have been particularly good at locating ripe fruit and other food in the island's thick vegetation. So it looks as if the dodo was better able to survive and defend itself than was originally believed. Yet, less than 200 years after Europeans first arrived on the island, they had become extinct. So what was the reason for this? For a long time, it was believed that the dodos were hunted to extinction. But scientists now believe the situation was more complicated than this. Another factor may have been the new species brought to the island by the sailors. These included dogs, which would have been a threat to the dodos, and also monkeys, which ate the fruit that was the main part of the dodo's diet. These were brought to the island deliberately. But the ships also brought another type of creature, rats, which came to land from the ships and rapidly overran the island. These upset the ecology of the island, not just the dodos, but other species too. However, they were a particular danger to the dodos because they consumed their eggs. And since each dodo only laid one at a time, this probably had a devastating effect on populations. However, we now think that probably the main cause of the bird's extinction was not the introduction of non-native species, but the introduction of agriculture. This meant that the forest that had once covered all the island and that had provided a perfect home for the dodo was cut down so that crops such as sugar could be grown. So although the dodo had survived for thousands of years, suddenly it was gone. That is the end of part four. You now have one minute to check your answers to part four. Thank you, Ron. Thank you.
ผมว่าเล่มนี้ถ้าถ้าพาร์ทที่ยากสุดก็สองก็สามครับถ้าพาร์ทสองอ่ะมันทริกกี้เมื่อกี้พี่เราฟังอยู่สองรอบอ๋อมันพูดหมดเลยเนาะรู้สึกปะมันพูดหมดเลยอ่ะอืมแล้วก็พาร์ทสามเนี่ยก็ multiple choice ค่อนข้างทริกกี้หนักอยู่นะฮะก็เพราะฉะนั้นต้องระวังนะครับอย่าประมาทนะที่ซึ่งของที่ไปสอบสัปดาห์สัปดาห์ที่แล้วมาเขาบอกว่าเออถ้าข้อข้อสอบที่สอบจริงอ่ะมันจะมันจะเหมือนเล่มสิบสี่สิบห้าสิบสิบหกอ่ะที่เขาฝึกทำเขาบอกเนี่ยใช่ใช่ก็คือเล่มสิบหกนะที่เล่มที่เราเลือกกันนอกเมื่อกี้ที่จะมีเวอร์ชันสิบสิบเอ็ดสิบสองสิบสามสี่สิบห้าสิบหกรันตั้งแต่เอ่อคิวที่สิบถูกไหมครับเพราะฉะนั้นเนี่ยแต่ละเซตเนี่ยมันจะมี4ี่เทสแต่ว่าพอเราเราจัดทำข้อสอบเนี่ยเราจะต้องทำชุดหนึ่งสองครั้งเพื่อเมคชัวร์ว่าเราหลุดไปกี่ข้ออะไรอย่างเงี้ยนะครับอืมคะแนนดีขึ้นปะเราเช็คกันหนึ่งครับอ่าลองเช็คดูให้เวลาเช็คนะครับสวัสดีครับสวัสดีครับเป็นไงบ้างอืมอ๋อคือมาคิวเดี๋ยวขึ้นตีวันนี้มาสายเพราะว่าติดเรียนแซดอยู่ครับอ๋อเป็นไงบ้างเรียนแซดตอนนี้มาอ๋อแซดแม่ครับไปทําแซดส่วนมาไม่ใช่หมายถึงว่าพี่ติวแซดไปปีที่แล้วอ่ะสงสัยเขาไม่ได้สอบเมื่อปีนี้ลุ้นอยู่ครับว่าจะได้สอบหรือเปล่าเพราะสงสารมากคือติวกันจนแบบติวจนได้พันห้าติวจนแบบว่าจนไม่ค่าติวก็จนไม่มีข้อสอบจะให้ติวแล้วแต่ว่าสุดท้ายไม่ได้ไปสอบสงสารมากเลยอ่ะไม่หนุ่ยกันว่าแบบไม่ชัวร์เราเราไปเช็คดูดีๆนะว่าสนามเอ่อเขาเรียกว่าสนามสอบถ้ารอบนี้ไม่มีก็อดเหรอพี่เจอทีหนึ่งมกราจริงเหรออ๋อแต่ว่าไอเอลส์ไม่มีครับไอเอลส์คือรันรันยาวหมายถึงว่าทุกเดือนยาวครับไอเอลเขาเขามีทุกสัปดาห์เลยทุกเดือนวันนี้ไม่แอบฟังเฉยครับเพราะว่าไม่เดี๋ยวมาเนั่งทำสปีกิ้งด้วยกันนะครับอ๋อเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวผมต้องกินข้าวเดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวเปิดไปฟังอะไรกันครับเป็นยังไงบ้าง everyone อ่ะนะครับ listening ก็ประมาณนี้นะอันนี้เป็นเทสที่สี่ของแคมเบรดเล่มสิบหกนะครับก็เท่าที่ฟังเมื่อกี้ก็แอบยากอยู่นะใครรู้สึกว่าง่ายบ้างยกมือหนึ่งกับสี่โอเคครับแต่ว่าสองกับสามได้บอกคิดเดิมครับเป็นเรื่องโดโดนะฮะซึ่งสูตรครับสี่นะฮะเป็นโดโดมันก็คือฮัมมิงเบิร์ดนั่นแหละนะครับแต่ว่าสูญพันธุ์ไปละนะฮะอ่าใช่แต่ว่าจริงๆแล้วเนี่ยพี่มองว่าพาร์ทสามมันแอบทริกกี้นิดหนึ่งเพราะว่าหลุดไปหมดเลยอ่ะแถบที่เป็นเนี่ยจับคู่อ่ะอืมพาร์ทสามผมน่าจะผิดหมดเลยครับอ่าก็ลองลองไปเทสดูนะครับลองลองแบบย้ำหน่อยหน่อยนะครับเพราะจริงๆแล้วเลสซิ่งมันวนนะแล้วก็เอ่อสกอร์ลิสซิ่งเนี่ยต้องทําให้ได้สูงที่สุดอันนี้รีมายไว้นะครับถ้าเป็นไปได้คืออยากให้แบบมากที่สุดเท่าที่เราจะทําได้นะผมอยากรู้พาร์ทหนึ่งข้อข้อแรกผมไม่รู้ว่าผมฟังถูกเพราะผมฟังถูกผมก็ฟังเป็นเมทั้งทั้งสองรอบเลยพาร์ทพาร์ทหนึ่งข้อสิบอะพูดถึงข้อสิบอะแม่ไม่หมายถึงว่าคุณจะมาเมแต่ว่าขอให้อจโอนเงินภายในสิ้นเดือนมาร์ชไงใช่ปะประมาณนั้นปะอ๋อโอเคเพราะว่าผมฟังผมผมฟังเป็นเมทั้งทั้งทั้งสองรอบเลยหมายถึงว่าเขาจองใช่ปะเขาจะใช้เมแต่ว่าเอ่อเขาเดฟเฟซิตไปครึ่งหนึ่งก็คือมัดจําไปแล้วก็ที่เหลือเนี่ยให้โอนเข้าภายในสิ้นเดือนมาร์ชเขาบอกนะฮะใช่อ่าแต่ว่าโอเคพาร์ทสองอ่ะยากพาร์ทสองนี้เนี่ยไล่เช็คแล้วตัวที่เป็นเอิมพาร์ทสามกับพาร์ทสามครับยากจริงกับพาร์ทสองอ่ะโคตรยากโคตรยากโคตรยากมากคุณวิมายไว้นะครใครที่รู้สึกว่าเฮ้ยมันง่ายเนี่ยตัดไมซ์เซตใหม่นะแล้วก็ไปลองลองฝึกทำเยอะๆย้ำๆนะครับพี่พี่จริงๆพี่ไม่มีอะไรหรอกเพราะว่าข้อสอบมันมีการเจ็บหลอกเพราะว่าถ้าเกิดว่ามันเหมือนเดิมเนี่ยมันจะทําให้คะแนนมันเฟ้อถูกไหมครับทีนี้เนี่ยเอ่อทางแคมบริดเนี่ยจริงๆแล้วน่าพยายามยึดเขาเรียกว่าพยายามยึดสิบเล่มสิบสามมั้งถ้าจำไม่ผิดเล่มสิบสามก็เริ่มยากละนะครับเล่มสิบสามสิบสี่สิบห้าสิบหกเล็ตเซว่ารอบนี้ไอก็ไม่เคยเ
ผมผมเพิ่งไปเช็คเขาเห็นเขาบอกคดีครับเล่มสิบหกล่าสุดแล้วก็เลยเล่มสิบหกปล่อยมาปีนี้แหละปีโควิดนี่แหละต้นปีถ้าจะไม่ผิดนะฮะโอเคนะประมาณนี้นะครับพอได้ไหมได้คะแนนเท่าไหร่ครับเรดาลองเช็คสกอร์ให้หน่อยซิไม่มีอะไรคือพี่แค่ถามเพื่อแบบรีมายเราว่าแบบเราต้องเลขที่ออกนะครับสามสิบถึงสามสิบห้าแค่นั้นเองนะครับถ้าไม่ถึงก็ต้องไป practice นะครับถ้าอยู่ได้สามสิบห้าก็ play safe แค่นั้นเองประมาณยี่สิบหกครับเป็นหลุดหลุดสองกับสามหมดแล้วแต่ว่าส่วนใหญ่ส่วนใหญ่ข้อที่หลุดเนี่ยจะเป็นข้อที่ได้แต่ว่าสเปคผิดใช่ไหมครับหรือว่ายังไงเอ่ยอะไรนะครับหมายถึงว่าอ่าพาร์ทสี่เนี่ยมันจะมีปัญหาเรื่องสเปลลิ่งเช่นเราพิมพ์อ่าไม่ใช่พิมพ์ผิดคือแบบกดผิดอะไรเงี้ยก็ถือว่าอ่าหลุดไปถูกไหมครับแต่ว่าสามกับสองเนี่ยมันจะเป็นความเป๊ะในการฟังคือ comprehension ต้องชัดอีกหนึ่งเพราะ matching มันใช้กับ skill practice หน่อยหนึ่งนะครับเพราะฉะนั้นถ้าเกิดว่าผลิกสองสามเนี่ยถือว่าปกติโอเคไหมจุดที่เราต้องรีมายคือว่าอย่างเช่นพาร์ทแรกที่มันเป็นที่มันเป็น spelling เนี่ยไม่ควรจะหลุดเนื่องจาก spelling งงที่ไอซ์ไหมหมายถึงว่า let's say ว่าสมมติอยู่พิมพ์คำว่า garden แล้วอยู่ตกตัว r ไปอันนี้คือ worst case ไม่เอารับไม่ได้ unacceptable โอเคไหมอ่านะครับแต่ว่าข้อแบบแมทชิ่งที่มันผิดเนี่ยโอเคเพราะว่ามันวัดในเรื่องของการฟังอย่างตั้งใจโอเคอืมเราไปฟิกในส่วนของพาร์ทยากๆได้นะครับโอเคไหมเคลียร์นะฮะทุกคนโอเคครับเพชรเป็นไงบ้างเพชรแฮปปี้เพชรไปสอบแล้วเนี่ยเดือนหน้าไฟล์ครับได้เออวันนี้ได้สิบสิบแปดครับไม่เป็นไรพาร์ทนี้มันยากนะครับก็ลองไปฟิกดูนะอ่ะอย่างนี้นะครับทุกคนก็คือเหมือนกับว่าแต่ละพาร์ทเนี่ยให้ไปเอ่อเขาเรียกว่าเราเราจะมาร์คคะแนนอยู่แล้วใช่ไหมถ้าอยู่เอ่อสามารถไปทวนแต่ละพาร์ทได้เนี่ยก็จะบิงโกเรคคอมเมนต์ไปนิดนึงลองไปหาเทปสคริปต์ของไอ้เจ้าตัวเทปนี้นะฮะแล้วก็ลองไล่อ่านดูพร้อมฟังไม่ได้ว่าอ่านไปด้วยฟังไปด้วยมันจะทําให้เรา get to the point มากขึ้นนะประมาณนี้อ่ะ listening คร่าวๆมานี้ไม่มีอะไรมากเพลนเพลนนะ alright อ่ะทีนี้ speaking ไหมอันนี้ทำสไลด์แบบ small ไปเลยนะฮะอ่ะแล้วอยากฟังพาร์ทไหนก็จิ้มนะฮะตั้งแต่สิบสิบเอ็ดสิบสองสิบสามสิบสี่โอเคไหมอ่ะมาครับทีนี้เราจะมี day ทั้งหมด day two day three day four อ่ะ random ครับชอบเลขไหนครับวันนี้มีสิบสองวันนะครับอ่าให้เราเลือกนะครับเรามีสิทธิ์เลือกนะแต่ประเทศเราไม่ค่อยมีสิทธิ์เลือกเท่าไหร่ครับอื่นก็เช่นเดียวกันนะครับตอนแรกเราเล่นอ่าเอาเลขอะไรดีวันนี้วันที่เท่าไหร่ครับหรือข้อห้าข้อห้าครับหรือคอร์รัปชั่นนี่พวกพวกทํางานใช้แรงงานป่ะครับชอบข้อห้าแหละอ่าใช่ใช่ใช่บลูเขาว่ากับไวท์ไวท์เขาว่าคือแบล็กเอาฟิสนะครับอย่างอ่าอย่างทีเชอร์ก็ทำงานออฟฟิศทำงานหน้าคอมนะครับทำงานแบบสมองสมองมีการใช้เส้นหยักบ้างเล็กน้อยแต่บลูเขาว่าคือพวกโอเปอเรชั่นทั้งหมดครับพวกผลงานก่อสร้างทั้งหมดอะไรอย่างเงี้ยอ่านะครับใช้แรงงานนี่นะครับว่ามีความต่างอย่างไรบ้างอะไรอย่างนี้ครับโอเคไหมเราจะเอาเดย์นี้เลยเหรอเดย์เก้าไหมวันนี้วันที่สิบเก้ามีเดย์สิบเก้าไหมครับเดย์สิบเก้าไม่มีมีแค่สิบสองท็อปิกแล้วก็จะวนนะครับงั้นเอาเดย์เก้าเนาะจะได้ใกล้เคียงนะครับ n i n t e e n of October เหรอทีนี้ให้เราเลือกคนละสองข้อครับซ้ำได้ไม่มีปัญหาแต่หามาแค่สองข้อพอผมว่าข้อหนึ่งนี่น่าจะเป็นอะไรที่ที่ใกล้ตัวมากมาก What are มันถามว่าอะไรดีนะ Main environmental problems in your country อ่ะดีครับน่าสนใจอยู่ว่าข้อสามข้อสามนี่ 
เขาสามคือเขาทำคือเขา protect the environment อันนี้มันจะยากหน่อยนึงนะเพราะว่าอยู่ต้องพูดเป็น firstly secondly อะไรข้อสามว่ายากครับผมเลือกได้ครับเลือกได้เลือกแค่สองสองข้อแบบจุดควายเนาะซีโนแวคแคมหนึ่งนะฮะแอสตราแคมหนึ่งเอาเลือกมาสองพอนะครับสองข้อสองนี่ข้อสองจะเอาข้อสองใช่ไหมไม่ครับว่าเฮ้ยไม่รู้เลยครับว่าจะกังวลมันทำไมไอ้ส่งไปเลยยังไม่แน่ใจเลือกมาเลยครับเลือกไว้ในใจเดี๋ยวไอ้ถามให้นะครับชอบข้าไหนเลือกมาเดี๋ยววันนี้พี่ก็พูดเหมือนกันนะพี่อยากพูดด้วยเหมือนกันจะได้เท่ากันเนาะดีไหมขอส่งไปสองครั้งหน่อยนะ sorry เป็นยังไรบ้างใครพร้อมแล้วนะครับเปิดไมรอเลยนะฮะแล้วบอกไอด้วยไอด้วยถามอันนี้เป็น speaking discussion นะครับซึ่งต้องพูดให้เยอะแล้วก็พูดจาก inner นะครับ discussion เนี่ยจะเป็นการวัดว่า naturally speaking เป็นยังไงบ้างนะครับ
เป็นยังไงบ้างครับใครเลือกข้อไหนบ้างเดี๋ยวให้พริกมาเลือกด้วยเนี่ยพริกยังอยู่ก็เนี่ย Are you there I'm still here um แต่กินข้าวอยู่ครับคุณ Alright So which one do you choose here เรดาพร้อมยังแป๊บแป๊บหนึ่งครับกำลังกำลังหาหัวข้อยครับอยากยากถึงหัวข้อเลยยากสิยากยากนี่ยากอีกหนึ่งนะฮะ naturally speaking ต้องยากอยู่แล้วนะฮะอืมถ้าปลูกปลูกต้นไม้เยอะนี่ช่วยช่วยนี่ป่ะครับช่วยไม่ให้เพื่อไม่ให้มันตามท่วมป่ะครับปลูกต้นไม้เยอะต้องถามเพชรอ่ะ
เนี่ยลองเช็คน่าจะช่วยเพราะว่ามันช่วยพยุงผมไม่รู้ว่ามันมันเพราะทำไมครับมันอุ้มน้ำปะหมายถึงว่ามันกันไว้อ่ะเพราะว่าเอ่อต้นไม้มันต้องต้องดูดน้ำใช่ปะ let's say เป็นอย่างนั้น absorb some water things like that แล้วเพลงขยะเลียลาดมันมันทําให้มันทําให้เกิดแอร์ฟลูชันครับชิ้นขยะแร่ว่าก็ใช่ปะเพราะว่ามันทําให้มีกลิ่นไง smelling ใช่ไหมแน่นใช่ครับ but effect for air pollution right คิดมาได้นะครับผิดถูกช่างมันครับเน้นฟลูเอนเพราะว่าเขาไม่ได้มีการพิสูจน์ไอเดียเรานะฮะขอฟลูเอนไว้ก่อนนะฮะสรุปอยู่ชิวส์อะไรกันบ้างเนี่ยนะครับอ่ะชิวส์มาครับคนละสองข้อครับซ้ำไม่เป็นไรครับไม่วอร์รี่นะครับแต่ว่าทุกคนต้องตอบสองข้อนะเป็นไงบ้างได้ป่าวอือฮึรอดรอดรอดผมว่าเอาเอาเอาสามก็ได้ครับสามกับสองสองข้อแล้วครับได้ทั้งสองข้อครับคนละสองข้อไม่งั้นเดี๋ยวจะพูดน้อยไงเดี๋ยวไม่คุ้มนะฮะเดี๋ยวไม่หมายถึงว่าเดี๋ยว generate fluency ไม่ได้ถ้าเราพูดน้อยนะครับโอเคเออแล้วสุดสุดเด่นอ่ะเหรอ nature right okay so question number three would be how can people protect the environment okay so what do you think about it อันนี้ให้เริ่มเลยนะครับผมยังไม่ได้เลือกอีกข้อนึงครับอาเริ่มเลยก็ได้ครับเดี๋ยวค่อยคิดเลือกข้อหนึ่งเดี๋ยวค่อยคิดนะครับ All right I'm going to start with you first right there right um, so the question that you have chosen here is that question number three right how can people protect 
the environment? Um, okay, let me see. Okay, um, the way to protect the environment. Firstly, um, people should not uh, ignore um, like. Okay. Um, firstly, reduce using a plastic bag. That is, um, that is a, uh, that it's a good way to protect the environment as well. And also, don't litter some trash or waste um, in the ocean or in the sea because that can lead the aquatic animals to death. And that is a big problem, which is a trim, um, like it's a serious consequences that the animals will encounter. And also, if you if if we campaign to reduce using um, a four paper or a piece of paper to um, such as using them for a document or using or like applying them to write something or for your notebook if you reduce uh if you try to reduce using them that is a, that is going to be but very beneficial for the environment because um the the process of produce uh producing these paper is from defor deforestation there are more uh there are locking workers who try to cut the trees out and destroy the trees to produce this paper. So that's uh, so that's the reason why we should produce using the paper. Um, and thirdly, uh, stop stop using car or your vehicles when you get when you go to work your workplace or go to school. Um, get in the public car using using a vehicle such as electric car that is there is another way of transporting or traveling that is very uh, very useful for environment uh, because if we reduce using cars or vehicles that um, um, the problem of traffic jam or traffic congestion and also the noise pollution will be decreased. And also the electric car doesn't consume fuel or um, some energy from natural resources. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you so much for sharing here. Right, how can people protect the environment here, right? So basically we have to think about the practical solution that we can take into consideration, right? Like you need to mention firstly, what we need to do. Second, uh, what about the consequences that we should, um, you know, should be prevented from um, this kind of thing in order to make sure that uh, we can um, protect our environment to be better. Is that right? Okay, good. Thank you so much. I may have Conti song. Next one. Cry prom, I have my roller, and I have look on it. Head look on it, I have. Which one open? Uh, call. Call fee, like I'm up. Call fee, all right. Um, so the question is that do you think money is spent on protecting? Uh, okay, for the question, I do do agree the question because because I I think people must 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 spend money for for to protecting animal be because 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 now now because nowadays um they have a lot of um problem about cutting tree and and that 
and that made animals are like don't have don't have pace 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 to to live that mean like uh, uh they 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 should spend money to build or 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 create pay to to live for like uh, for them and and the main problem is about the the liver because now it have a is it have it has a it has a mukobo warm warming that ha, that made that that made that many more die and uh, uh, and and I and I think we 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 should spend spend money to protecting and 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 animal and and then cutting the tree to make to make a house or or the place or or in anything that they want. Mm -hmm. All right, good. Okay, good. So do you think money should be spent on protecting animals, right? Wildlife animals. So basically it's all about like uh, what we have to preserve um, wildlife, um, wildlife animals that might become extinct, is that right? So we need to spend some money in order to make sure that those animals might not be extinct from this world. That's it. Okay, okay. ma? Ma, prick, prick, prick you well. Okay. อ่ากินข้าวเสร็จแล้วครับพูดโอเคงั้นงั้นเอาข้าวซี่เหมือนกันได้มั้ยครูข้าวซี่เหรอดูยูทิงมันนี่นี่ล่ะครับเอาเอ
you know, make a unity or even some 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 kind of thing that we we could protect in order to make sure that our life might be must be sustainable later on. Is that right? Okay. Nahat Brahmani. Good. Thank you so much, so much fun. Nakab. I don't for put by put by a year. นะฮะเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อ
ผมว่าเอาเริ่มเริ่มแล้วก็ได้ครับตัวก่อนโอเค so which one do you choose question number two is that right ใช่ครับ Okay, so why should people be concerned about the environment? Um, people should be concerned about the environment because, um, one of the reason that I said that because, um, environment is very essential for, uh, living things. I I mean every living thing this in this world, and. Also, and uh, nowadays, most people, or some people who don't care about protecting the environment, one of the factor that I think that they're not concerned about the environment because um, the the consequences or the some impact doesn't affect them directly, and um, most of this happens to some rich people who have a lot of money, something like that. Uh, but and most of the The problems from not protecting the environment mostly affect to farmers or some poor people who are unprivileged, something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, and firstly, the way to protect the environment and um, is it's uh, it's very simple um, in the current time. Just compa uh, um, the way to protect the environment is to uh, it's for uh, is to protect the animals first. For example, campaigns to be a vegetarian, eat more vegetables, and eat more and consume more natural uh, some some food that is from natural resources, except some animals. Because if you if you de decrease the consuming of animals, that will help. Um, to not hunt the more animals, and also hunting animals can lead to the extinction of some species of animals. Or another example is, we should be concerned about hunting some the animals called elephants. And the reason that most people kill or slaughter the uh, this kind of animal because they they they, they want The, the elephant ivory and then sell it to some brokers to to to, to some people illegally something like yeah and the law should the law enforcement should be more strict. Mm. And furthermore, um, don't lead to some ways or. Um, yeah, don't lead to some waste or trash in the water because that causes a water pollution as well. So um, the 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 impact or the the serious or gravity of the issue of water pollution that people will encounter, which is um, wastewater, because because that if there is a water pollution, the uh, the drinking water or the or the water the 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 people in the current time use. Used for their surviving, such as drinking the water or using the the, the water to take a shower, that that will cause, I mean, um, the the water that contains some contaminants and toxins, or some poll pollutants or some chemical substances, will cause, um, such as will cause a diarrheal diseases, yeah. Mm -hmm. And mm. I need, I need to thought of how to do it. No, 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 go ahead. Yeah, you need to speak. <laughs> uh, and <laughs> oh, okay. All right, good. Thank you. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, evolution. Okay, that. Nah. Okay, one, two, three, go. Go ahead. Yeah. Air, pol uh, air pollution issue is it's another issue that people should be concerned about because um, air pollution can cause a global warming and some like for example combustion or burning 
tr- some uh, a trash, and then uh, the smoke will uh, destroy the ozone layers of of the road, and it also causes um, the pandemic probably. <laughs> also, also it affects uh, humans physical uh, physical condition. Yeah. Uh, such as respiratory system, or it affects a uh, human's lungs directly. All right, I see. Thank you so much for your sharing here. So it's all about like um, why do why should or why do people uh, concerns about the environment, right? So basically, we need to talk about the the cause. And effect, right? So basically, it might be like get a cost for some negative, um, negative uh, consequences to other people' life or human life, and then it cause lots of us, um, you know, bad behavior or bad consequences for environment here, right? So what we need to understand is that you need to um, come up with the possible problems uh, that is related to environment first and try to. You know, explain based on your understanding uh, why should we keep it um, to be safe or to be more sustainable. Is that right? Good. Thank you so much for your sharing here. My have twenty two. Influence you don't chat. No, have me. I'm seven point five. Okay, right. Okay. 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 Number one, yeah, I choose okay, number so one. So, are you made environmental problem here? Mm-hmm. So, in my opinion, um, the main environmental problem is occurred by human activity. Um, the main problem in my country is um, to, um, occur from um, flooding and a burning field for a field. After they harvest the crops, so I'm gonna explain why. So, as we can see in the news of the beginning of the year from Chiang Mai, we can see that they burn a fuel, and after that, it emission a gas, and it it also um make a PM two point five that that that. <laughs> uh, that can harm your respirator, respiratory system, and yeah, it's it's also like air pollution. Mm-hmm. It not even it not just hurt human, but also hurt like be like harm for um animal in the forest, and it also uh. After they burn a field, the fire a fire will like maybe go into the forest and be like a why how do I fire bar why fire? Fire bar how do I call it? Fire bar wide fire yeah that's correct. Uh, why fire yeah yeah and then like after they burn and the fire is. Is um, fired up. Fired up, right? Shut it off, right? Shut up, I g e t Uh, yeah. After the fire is shut up. Yep, I see. All right. The so, surface of soil on the field will be um, de- degrade. Mm-hmm. So it occur um, um, soil pollution. After that, and then next one is. Of water pollution because right now it's raining season and we can see in the news that it has so much of rain by a poor um, water system to um, maintain the water. Uh-huh. Oh, wow. so when we have a flood, um, the water is still um, it can occur um, it can bring a. Trash. Uh. Hmm. 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 H
garbage, right? Or garbage, yeah, and trash into the water, and it can make it. It it can turn water to be like pollution, and it may be contain a toxic and chemical substance in the water that can harm a fish, or maybe a, even human like us mm-hmm. too. Yeah, I think it's like good. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, I think it's all. Yeah, stop, yeah. <laughs> Stop, 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 I'm going to uh, I'm going to say that you can feel free to talk, okay? Um, because it's all about like uh, free talking. Like what I'm trying to say is like the environment, the environment problem that occur by choosing like Wi-Fi, no, like burning fuel and a flooding, mm-hmm. and it occur like an environment problem. I see. Good. Um, and and it's hard for me to try to like explain how it occurs and like why it can be pollution in the environment. Mm-hmm. But it's kind of yeah. topic discussion here today is kind of like um, very scientific and informative information. Is that right? I mean, um, let's say yeah. like, to come up with the way that we have to think um, the cause, the possible causes and the possible solutions in order to make sure that we can prevent uh, something from a bad or ineffective uh, consequences here. So for the first question, it's all about like environmental problems. So basically, I'm going to uh, let you think about that. It can be divided in two or three sections. The first one would be like air pollution, water pollution, noise pollution, or even any kind of thing that we can come up in our mind, right? So basically, yeah. if we can think, um, you know, out of like, let's say, regardless from the COVID-19, which is considered as um, air pollution. Am I correct? I'm not really sure, but it can be considered like that. So we can talk about water pollution or even, um, you know, uh, soil pollution or like uh, environmental impact later on, right? So anyway, just come up with cause and solution, possible solution would be great. Thank you so much. Okay, good. Yeah. คิวสุดท้ายแล้วฮะวันนี้นะครับเพจของเราครับครับผมเอาเป็นข้อหนึ่งนะครับโอเค all right so what are the main environmental problems here the for the question the main the main environmental problem in my in in my country is 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 Cutting tree, killing and 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 killing animals. Uh, for for example, the worst case, the worst case about 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 killing animal is is fame shy who 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 is the famous in the bad way and. And who is who? Who is Laya? Laya killing? Uh, uh, what that is me? What that is calling? Uh, Sirdam. How do you call it? Back, 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 back. Back panther. Black panther. Sirdam, different, right? Sirdam, not like now. I'm not really sure. Okay, you can say like. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Black panther and. And 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 in the the fact the lawyer and and police cannot fault fault to him. Moreover, um, um, cutting tree is is the main main problem in my my country to because numerous of 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 people they want to cutting tree. To build home or 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 sell at the most expensive price mm-hmm. for for someone uh, who want who who want want to buy it and af- and 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 so that 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 made made people want to cutting tree to sell for. To sell for 
like a for to have 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 money to use in daily life. Uh -huh. All right, good. เป็นไงบ้างสนุกไหมครับวันนี้มันมากเลยอ่ะแฮปปี้ไหมครับทุกคนเออง่ายกว่าสบายอ้อง่ายกว่าของสบายที่แล้วครับที่เกี่ยวมิวเซียมอะครับอันนั้นคือแบบไม่ไหวใช่ไหมมิวเซียมไม่ไม่รู้เรื่องอะไรครับใช่นะครับก็ไม่เป็นไรก็พยายาม generate ไอเดียให้มากที่สุดนะครับอันนี้เป็น discussion topic ซึ่งเราก็จะมาสลับกันนะครับว่าจะทําแล้วก็ random มันมานะครับว่าเดย์ไหนจะเอา topic ไหนแต่ว่ามันก็น่าสนใจกับ topic ละเกือบทุกท็อปปิกนะครับที่เชลคันนะซึ่งตัวนี้เนี่ยก็จะจริงๆแล้วมันพูดง่ายแต่ว่าการพูดดี so I think that um, so the topic is quite is not I mean it's interesting right and then it's not that um, far from what we are going to say just because we can experience or encounter this this kind of thing that is related to environment or nature right but Um, in order to make sure that you're speaking, it might be coherent or connecting all of ideas to each other. It means that you need to arrange your sentences uh, and then try to come up with the best cause and um, you know possible causes and possible consequences uh, in order to make sure that the speaking speaking um, you know responses here should be come along with what the examiner expect from you. You know what I mean? So it's this kind of thing that. Um, if we just free talking, so it means that we can talk any topic um, freely. But for a speaking test, it means that you need to make sure that you can, um, you know, explain a bit relevant information here and try to um, see the relevant information that you can go through with your speaking here. Can I have a man, Baba? ให้เน้นว่าให้พูดเป็นเป็น cause กับ effect แล้วก็โยงให้มันแบบเข้ากันได้ดีนะ Let's say เป็นอย่างนั้นอ่าแฮปปงแฮปเป้นะครับเคลียร์ไม่ให้มีคำถามไม่ให้วันนี้เดี๋ยวเดี๋ยวขอขอลิงก์ลิสเซนนิ่งอันนั้นได้ไหมครับได้ได้นี่ไงส่งไปแล้วอยู่ในไลน์นะครับใช่ใช่ลิสเซนนิ่งนะครับมีแบบทุกเวอร์ชันที่เราสามารถเรียนรู้กันได้นะฮะสิบห้าไล่ตั้งแต่อ่าสิบนะครับสิบสิบเอ็ดสิบสองสิบสามสิบสี่นะครับอ่าลิสเนียงก็ไปฝึกได้ speaking ต้องคุยกับคนนะครับจริงๆแล้วเนี่ยถามว่าว่าเราสามารถไป record เสียงได้แต่มันไม่มันไม่มีจุดเปรียบเทียบว่า natural speaking เป็นยังไงอยู่เข้าใจอ่า I mention ว่าสมมติว่าเราจะคุยกับฝรั่งเนี่ยมันก็ต้องคุยในลักษณะที่แบบอ่า human interaction หรือว่า the way that we can speak it must be a partner speaking partner You know what I mean? Yeah. So basically, I think that discussion topic would be like yeah, you can train uh, with us together. I mean, what I am, you need class. But the two part two, yeah. Remind me, yeah. Two part two, which is two in a team, yeah. Put record, be done, yeah. Actually, we have to put topic in the line, and we can record and do fluency with ourselves. But discussion must be with people, yeah. The best thing, yeah. For me, all right. I think all of you. Understand what I'm saying here. We come time here. If we don't have class, na, it job. See you next week. Thank you. 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 Thank you.